ですね Good morning, Bethesda. Welcome to worship. If it's your first time or you're a familiar face around here, welcome back. Yensina and all of our newer friends. Good to be together today in God's house of mercy. We are, uh, we are continuing our Sailing in the Risen Sun Easter theme. And today, 1 John chapter 3 tells us who we are. We're children of God. And that's something that we take for granted in today's world all the more. But we're going to take a look at just how radical a promise that is for us. A um, couple of important announcements, both a celebration of uh, God's service through a couple of, of saints in our midst, as well as prayers requested for, for families that are grieving this week and in the weeks to come. On Thursday, uh, April 11th, this last week, we lost two saints in our midst. One is Pastor Bill Lawson, um, who had just celebrated his 90th. Krista was out there uh, with him fairly recently. And Pastor Bill was an intern pastor here all the way back in uh, Pastor Peterson's times, um, right on the corner of 59, 1960-ish, I believe. 58, thank you, Roger. And you were there to, at the time, you lived through it, okay, yeah. But Pastor Bill also in his retirement years spent many winters out here, he and Tony, uh, together with us. Both, uh, they had a place to stay here with their friends, Jerry and Joyce. They also served uh, as visitation pastors. So Bill would catch up with a lot of his, uh, his senior friends. And uh, he was always such an encouragement. When I was a youth worker here before seminary, Pastor Ralph and Pastor Troy just loved when the winter was coming. It was like, Bill's coming. It's like having an annual consultant who loves you and knows you well. And Pastor Bill would come in, and here's what I'm seeing, here's what I'm hearing, and here's, you know, just some encouragement for you pastors and you staff. So we lost a good one, folks, and, and we certainly keep Tony in our prayers, as well as Krista, their daughter, who is on our church council, and Krista's sister, and all the rest of the family and the grandkids and such. So thank you, Pastor Bill, for your service here. Uh, also, uh, our missionary, longtime missionary in Pakistan, Jan Kersgaard died on Thursday as well. She'd been on hospice for some time after a long bout with ALS and really diminished um, capacity to communicate. And we thank God that this nurse uh, not only um, uh, healed lives here and trained nurses in our area, but she also spent more than a couple decades in her life in Tonk, Pakistan, uh, serving in a hospital. And... Uh, she, long before 9-11, she lived um, as a Christian in the Muslim world, understanding some, some of the ins and outs of that, as well as the call to go and share the gospel to those who are, who are on the outside. And so we thank Jan for her wonderful service as well, and pray for her brother Eric and all the rest of the Kirsgaard family at this time. Any specifics about services for them, whether that's if Pastor Bill's service has a live stream option from Wisconsin? or any details about Jan, a service for Jan. We will pass those along as soon as we have that information. With that, I invite you to please stand for our call to worship. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our resurrection joy. For us and for our salvation, the light of the world has come. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. At the river, Christ Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, Jesus opened the floodgates of God's reconciling love, freeing us to live as children of our Heavenly Father. We rejoiced with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to God who leads us in a new course in the light of his risen Son. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Raised up in Christ, we share God's peace with one another. You can remain standing, and we invite you to sing with us a song that we offered as special music on Easter, Resurrection Day. This is, this is Resurrection Day, the old life is gone, the new has come to stay. And the sorrows of the past are turning into praise. This is Resurrection Day. Come and find a new beginning. The river of God is a river of healing. Where sins are washed in a grave called baptism. Come and find a new beginning. We're alive. We're alive. With the one who is God's risen Son, Jesus Christ, Savior King, you have changed everything. Sing it out. This is Resurrection Day. Hell has been defeated. Death has lost its sting. And everything that has breath is lifting up His name. This is Resurrection Day. Come and see that He is risen. You won't find the dead here among the living. Walk into the light of the freedom we've been given. Come and see that He is risen. We're alive. We're alive. With the one who is God's risen Son, Jesus Christ, Savior King, you have changed. And we're alive. We're alive. With the one who is God's risen Son, Jesus Christ, Savior King, you have changed everything. Wake up, wake up, we're alive and breathing. Wake up to a stone that's rolled away. Wake up in the name of Jesus. This is resurrection. Sing it out. Wake up. Wake up. We're alive and breathing. Wake up to a stone that's rolled away. Wake up in the name of Jesus. This is resurrection day. This is resurrection day. We're alive with the one who is God's risen Son, Jesus Christ, Savior King. You have changed everything. We're alive with the one who is God's risen Wake up to a stone that 
that's rolled away. Wake up in the name of Jesus. This is Resurrection Day. This is Resurrection Day. This is Resurrection Day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from 1 John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, he will, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. So I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Okay, my youngest friends, come on up for children's time. Come on over. Hello, hello. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> it's come a long way, Fred. Huffing and puffing down here. Awesome. Good morning. All right, let me do a name check. Is it Elena? Mirabelle? Melody? Yes. Yeah. I actually wrote down your names, and almost every day this week, I'm like, Lord, thanks for my new friends, and I named you, and I did that almost every day, and that helps, helps me remember your name. I won't ask you if you know what my name is. You can just say pastor, and that is half correct. Yeah. Okay. No, my name's Tom. Okay, guys, it's so good to see you. I tell you, I got back uh, from a trip this, this weekend. I took, I took my boys camping with some friends. In fact, our bassist and one of our singers is still camping. But uh, it was raining a lot here, I heard. But it wasn't raining as much on the coast. But still, we came home slightly early yesterday. And uh, you know what's fun about camping? Campfires. So fun. My two-year-old came, and he had to learn that the smoke is constantly blowing in a new direction. And sometimes you have to move or your little baby eyes start watering and it looks like you're crying because of the smoke. 
And this guy, uh, is Abel here? No, he's sleeping in. He's sleeping off his camping trip. So Abel, he has his favorite blankie, right? Some of you have your favorite blankie or your favorite stuffy. Uh, Oscar's got a favorite stuffy every week. It's a new, a new friend of yours. But who's this one? Quubby. Quubby? He got it for his birthday. Perfect. Happy birthday. So Abel has a favorite blankie, and he had to take it everywhere camping, in the rain, in the smoke of the campfire, on the ground, I mean, everywhere he had to have his blankie. Every once in a while, he'd let me stuff it inside my shirt to keep it safe. But he needed that to feel strong and safe. Sometimes around a campfire also, people like to tell ghost stories. But you know what? When I take my kids camping, I never tell ghost stories. You know why? Because I want them to sleep at night. I don't want them to have nightmares and wake me up in the middle of the night. You know? Because sometimes when you're camping, you start hearing things and you're like, is that a bear? What is that? What's that sound? Oh no, that's just some snoring from somebody in my family. That's not a bear. And you start getting scared. So I don't tend to tell any ghost stories, even at home. I mean, why put that in your head, right? But ghost stories can be kind of fun sometimes. In our Bible story today that you're about to hear me share with everybody, Jesus, it's back on the very first resurrection day, just like we sang, Jesus showed up in a room, and the door was locked, and he just showed up, and he was right there with them. And everybody thought, oh, it's a ghost. It says that right in the Bible. Ah, it's a ghost. They believed him to be a ghost because they thought, how else would he just show up in a room? The door was shut the whole time. How would he just show up? He must be a ghost. And they were scared. And Jesus, not a ghost, Jesus said, peace, peace be with you. It's okay. And in the light of Jesus and his words, they were okay. They realized he's not a ghost. In fact, Jesus says, Jesus says, do you have anything to eat? I mean, he's pretty hungry after getting raised from the dead. He's like, that could really make somebody hungry as being dead for a few days. I haven't eaten in three days. Do you have anything to eat? Jesus says, do you have something to eat? And he ate it, and, it, and the food went in his mouth, and it just they disappeared. It, wasn't, it, it didn't fall on the ground. He wasn't a ghost. He was actually alive in his body. And they were so joyful. The disciples were so thrilled. It was amazing. And then Jesus gave them the job of going out of that room and telling people about the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the life and the love of God. And he, and he asked his friends to go and baptize people. We've talked about this baptismal font a few times here, and we'll keep doing it in the future. But this baptismal font has lights in it, which is really beautiful. And it kind of helps illuminate the, the beauty of this whole thing. And you know what I like to think of? When we tell ghost stories, whoever's telling the ghost story looks scary because they're in the shadows and their face is kind of in the shadows and you just see like the flames of the campfire lighting up their face. Or maybe inside of a tent they're holding a flashlight under their chin and the only thing you can see is their face telling the ghost story. But because of Jesus, because of Jesus, we don't have to be afraid that in the light of baptism, we are children of God. That God is telling us, you are my child. I love you. I forgive you. And I'm going to take care of you forever. And the light in our baptism font reminds us of that. That God does not tell ghost stories because he's risen. He's alive. And he doesn't want us to be afraid. So let's pray and thank God for that amazing gift. Dear Jesus, Jesus. we can be afraid of the dark. We can be afraid of ghosts. But you tell us, do not be afraid. You give us your peace. You give us your love. You remind us we are your children. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, friends, thanks so much. You can head on back to your seats. And I invite you to please stand out of reverence for Christ and his gospel and a rehearsal of the resurrection day to come. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. 
they were startled and terrified, and they thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I don't know if you've ever been around the free speech pavilion uh, on campus at the University of Oregon, although nowadays they might not call it the free speech pavilion, but uh, in my day, back in uh, you know, 1998, 1999, when I was a freshman at Oregon, the free speech pavilion on the corner of 13th and whatever street ended up at Mac Court, you could have all manner of guest speakers, presenters, groups coming and sharing whatever they wanted to share. Sometimes they had a microphone, sometimes they had to bring their own, sometimes you expected them to come because they told you it's coming, and other times they just showed up. And one day as a freshman, Bible Jim showed up. And Bible Jim had a sandwich board on both sides with all the different things and all the different kinds of people that God hates, according to Bible Jim. And, and then around each name or description of a person or a lifestyle, it's crossed out like a big X is over that person. As if to say, God does not love, but in fact hates this person and this kind and this person and these beliefs and these religions and these. So basically, who's left? Now, at first I was like, well, this is, I mean, this is just kind of what I could expect from somebody who wants to uh, avoid conversation and just kind of shout from the rooftops. And you could find examples in our scriptures of God's people just giving the word and facing whatever blowback or judgment the crowd wants to give them. So in that sense, he's being kind of his own self-made biblical prophet. But what really bothered me about Bible Jim, and this was probably a little bit of a Lutheran childhood instinct in me, what bothered me about Jim is that one of the things he had on his sandwich board, and I can't remember how he phrased it, but it said sinners, and it was crossed out. And as I, I, I went up and got in his face and started arguing with Bible Jim, and because he was saying Christians don't sin. The Christians are sinless, true Christians. Not like, you know, pew sitting Sunday Christians. I mean, like real Christians. Don't sin. They're over it. Jim is over it. He's holy. I really had a problem with that. I, and I, I couldn't quote all the Bible verses as an 18 year old that Bible Jim could quote. But. I, don't, I said something at some point where then he ended up telling the rest of the crowd, this guy has come closest to offering a good argument. You know, so it's like, okay, great. I mean, he's still the only one who's right in the room or in the vicinity. But uh, I got kind of close because I was really trying to nail him on, really, sinless, that's what it is. And yet, when we get to 1 John chapter 3 in our first reading today, which Deanna read for us, John seems to say the same thing Bible Jim says. And he says even more after our reading cuts off in verse 7. But just to refer back to, you're like, really? Did, he, did I just hear that? And it went, over, went past my, my hearing? 1 John 3, verse 6. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. I mean, it's just right there. I mean, why not put it on a sandwich board even now? 
anyone who abides in him, no one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. So, you know, just like, you know, quick survey, I mean, if you, if you have sin, you probably don't belong here. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave. Um, and I'm going to hand it over. Who, any, any sinless people here that can take over for me now? Ah, uh, yeah, I just met you, so I don't know if you're telling the truth, but I do think Barry's pretty great, but I don't know you, mister, so. Okay, fine, well, I'll be in trouble, because I'm a hypocrite up here speaking as if I was sinless, but just for the sake of saving the rest of you from being hypocrites, uh, let's go a little further on this, because John does seem to say quite clearly, you're not in, you're not abiding in God if you're sinning, so we're going to have to work with that. But first, let's back up to our, our gospel. Let's back up to the, to the first resurrection day when these disciples are puzzled in the room and Jesus comes in and pieces them while they're puzzling. Jesus gives his peace and they're terrified because only a ghost could just show up like that. And they think, surely we're in for it now. They're puzzled and even as he gives peace and shows them his hands and his, and his feet, his side, his wounds... They say, man, I don't know about this. Jesus gives them his peace, but the first thing the peace of Jesus does is it produces unpeace in our hearts. First thing the peace of Jesus does is produce unpeace in our hearts. Because some of us would say, right, if you have faith, you don't have fear, right? We've heard that. Or if you have peace, then you don't feel restlessness. You know, you just feel peace. Like peace is just a peaceful, easy feeling. And so if you don't have that easy feeling, then you don't have peace. Wrong. Jesus brings peace, but the first thing it does is actually create unpeace. It's kind of like if Jesus says to them, your sins are forgiven, the first thing you think is, wait, I have sins? Wait, which sin? What's a sin? Which ones? It creates this kind of like, oh, I'm a sinner. Peace be with you. Oh, are you saying I didn't have peace before you showed up? Wait, are you telling me now to have peace? You're showing up like a ghost? And now I'm supposed to have peace? Like, you're asking a lot, Jesus. Peace be with you. Just because Jesus wishes peace and you don't feel peace doesn't mean you don't have peace. Just because Jesus tells you to have faith, but you feel fear, doesn't mean you don't have faith. Just because you trust in Christ, but you still have sin, doesn't mean Bible Jim can cross you off of his sandwich board. Jesus shows up on his own terms, using his own terms. My peace, I give you. My peace, I leave with you. I do not give as the world gives. My peace is yours. And they're puzzled, even terrified. And he gives them his peace. He gives them his Holy Spirit. He gives them something to do. Because when you're feeling unpeace or restless, it's kind of nice to like know what to do next. Jesus says, I know what you can do. You can unlock the door. Start start there. Unlock the door. Then go out in my forgiveness and go and declare to the nations that this is the way it must be. That God's chosen Messiah must be crucified and raised from the dead on the third day. And that in his name, there is peace and forgiveness of sins. There's mercy. And this word produces repentance as God's peace produces unpeace and eventually true peace. So at our crew meetings this morning, we're diving further into this proposed mission statement, welcoming God's children home to mercy in Jesus. And today's readings really kind of give us both parts of that phrase, welcoming God's children home to mercy in Jesus. Welcoming God's children home. This is what we want. We want to be a welcoming place, We like to think of ourselves as one of those friendly churches. We want people to feel they belong here. We throw it up on our our renovated youth room. One of the big signs on the wall just says, you belong here. And the world itself, outside of the church, the world just wants people to be welcomed. Just belong. We all belong to the human race. I watched that documentary on Netflix about the making of We Are the World. You know, anyone who can get 50 divas and pop superstars into the same room to take turns singing solos, I mean, that's quite an effort. This is what we want, though. The world wants peace 
and love and belonging. And the world would say to John, and definitely to Bible Jim, the world would say, wait, 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 aren't we all God's children? Why does the letter of 1 John say, what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God for that is what we are. I mean, hasn't the Bible gotten that wrong to say that only God's children are only those who have come to trust in Jesus, who've been baptized into Christ? Welcoming God's children home, that's what we want, and that's what the world wants. The second part is a little more difficult. It's a mercy in Jesus. What we want is to be welcomed home. What we need is mercy in Jesus. We're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit because, yes, we are children of God bearing the image of our Maker. Every person that draws breath in this world is beloved of God, is part of the world for whom God sent His only begotten Son. Yes. And through baptism, we are reborn, children of God with a promise that God is for us, not against us. That who we are in God has nothing to do with what we do. It has everything to do with what Jesus has done for us. So 1 John, and truly the New Testament, is teaching us how to grow up in Jesus' trust, to grow up as children of God, that is what we are, John tells us. That is what we are. We're not good people getting gooder. We're children coming to grips with our adoption as God's children. We're children coming to grips with our adoption as God's children. Yes, you belong here. Yes, God is your heavenly Father. He's pleased with you on account of Christ. Yes, He's given you the keys to the kingdom. You don't have to sneak in the back door or try to live a good life pitching a tent in the front yard and hope you sort of get in on a technicality. Jesus has brought you home as his brother, his sister, a fellow child of the Heavenly Father. I love how John says this. John knows what he knows, and he knows what he doesn't know. He says, we are children of God, for that is what we are. And then he says, What we will become hasn't been revealed. But when that does come, we'll we'll see God. We'll be like God and be able to see what's going on. John's not trying to speculate. He's only revealing what's been revealed. Well, what's been revealed? We're children of God. And if you're not sure of that, here's the waters of baptism. We will put this promise and pour it over you so that you don't have to wonder if God is for you. But what we will be has not yet been revealed. I don't know what my kids will become. I know what some of them would kind of like to grow up and become. I, 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 ha, I know what kinds of people and character I would like my sons to emulate. But I don't truly know what they will become. It hasn't been revealed to me or any parents that I know of what my kids will become. But I already know who they are. I know who they are. Baptized and beloved children of God. And I'll trace it on their foreheads every day they live in my house. You're a baptized and beloved child of God. And I want to tell you, whether you've been here twice or you've been here twice as long as I have, you are a child of God and you have a relationship with God. When I was younger, I thought, there's Christians, they have a relationship with Jesus, and then there's everybody else who doesn't yet have a relationship with Jesus. And so what we're supposed to do as Jesus people is go and invite people to start a relationship with Jesus. And what I've come to realize is everybody has a relationship with God. God put the breath of life in every human person. Everybody has a relationship with God, whether they know it or not. But I'll tell you, there's a big difference in whether your relationship with God is based upon the law, under the criteria of your own conscience, or whether your relationship is based upon the gospel and the criterion of Christ crucified for your sins, raised for your, for your being made right. 
Simple question. You have a relationship with God. Do you want to relate to God through your conscience or his Christ? You have a relationship with God. Everybody you know has a relationship with God. Do you want them to have a relationship with God through their conscience, through the things they tell themselves or tell themselves that they believe to get through the day or the night? Or do you want to have a relationship through his Christ? So when John tells us that no one abides in God and sins, He's talking about abiding in sin. He's talking about sin that rules your conscience, sin that rules your life, intentional sin, premeditated sin, love of sin, intentional hiding of sin, living and abiding in sin as if it's more powerful than God. Abiding in sin means being under the government of sin. And in that kind of government, it's all about laws. And the laws and regulations only mount. The law books only get larger. There's only more and more amendments to that kind of constitution. There's more ways to fail under the law. But abiding in Christ means our adoption as God's children is the only thing that should rule in our conscience. That our relationship with God is based not on who we are, but on whose we are, on who we belong to. That repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed, not in your name once you've achieved that and put on the sandwich board that says you're every, you are not any of these things. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in Jesus' name. And so at Bethesda, we're going forward, welcoming God's people home, amen, home to mercy in Jesus. Amen. Welcoming God's people home to mercy in Jesus. And if that sounds too good to be true, then you are in a good place with those disciples on that first resurrection day, disbelieving with joy. Disbelieving in their joy and still wondering. And when they were disbelieving in their joy and still wondering, Jesus says, do you have anything to eat? And they said, sure. And he took them to his meal. And that's where you're invited today, too. If you're disbelieving, enjoy. If there's fear and faith inside you, if there's the peace of Christ, but also the unpeace in your heart, well, do you have anything to eat? We do. It's right here. Come to the Lord's table and receive his gifts today. And if you're not baptized, set your calendars for May 19th, Pentecost Sunday. We're going to receive new members at Bethesda, both uh, baptized uh, Christians who are joining our church, as well as people who are uh, seeking to be baptized. May 19th, we're going to have a big party. We're going to have a baptism, receive new members, and then, you know, probably have to have a sheet cake (laughs) before noon. Uh, We'll do that as well. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that we are children of yours. This is what we are, and we don't know what we will become, but you've told us who we are. Help us to live not by the criteria of the law and our conscience, but to live by the criterion of Christ for us. I pray that each person here would know they are a beloved child of God and that mercy is found in your name in in which we pray. Amen.
Our worship continues with a gathering up of tithes and offerings. The ushers come forward, and I'm going to go ahead and share a few announcements at this time uh, as we don't have special music for the moment. By the way, if you like to sing or play and would like to offer special music, the choir season is winding down pretty quickly. We do have a men's quartet, but we also have an open mic to be scheduled if you would like to offer any musical gifts you have uh, as, a por- as a part of our worship. Coming up today, the coffee hour is going to have crew meetings again. You'll see at your tables this week the summary from all the tables last week. And I'm going to be on the microphone more often today, kind of guiding us through a review of kind of what all the different tables shared last week. And then uh, we'll be continuing to to hone down um, uh, our our future together. Sunday school's upstairs in the Narnia room, which is kind of, once you're upstairs, you kind of go down the hallway and take a left, and the Narnia room is a couple doors down on the right. This coming Saturday at 9 a.m., we're having a spring cleaning work party. Um, Come dressed to work, and we will describe, we have a a few different kind of focus areas. Uh, A couple big ones are the stage area. It's kind of this storage room that's not very organized at the moment. So there's a lot of uh, cleaning out of the storage behind the stage. There's deep cleaning in the kitchen. Um, There's some other kind of touch-ups, polishing wood in the sanctuary, those kinds of things. And perhaps there'll be some other jobs that come up, just depending on what our labor force looks like Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And if you have a a lawn edger and you'd like to bring yours, then uh, Wally Jensen and and you can kind of, we can try to collect a few edgers and or people sweeping up the, the clippings behind the edgers and do some outdoor work as well. So... Uh, If that's something you're interested in, contact Wally Jensen or let me know and I'll connect you with Wally and we can plan some outdoor work as well. That's 9 o'clock on Saturday. We'll probably bust out some of the Sunday fellowship food and and have a few light refreshments in case you miss breakfast or you'd like a little something more to eat before we get to work. Anything else that we should highlight while we're together? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Church Planning Council's meeting is tomorrow at 5 p.m. It's open to to anyone. Uh, You can come and and listen in. You can interact. If you've got a specific kind of agenda item you'd like to come, um, please uh, let me or or Bill Gangwer know in advance so we can put you on the agenda. Um, But otherwise, come come along tomorrow at 5 o'clock. We meet upstairs in the creation room where all the good ideas are created. Okay. Oh. I invite you to please stand and sing Awesome God as the offering is brought forward. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Receiving God's goodness, responding to Christ's grace, and rejoicing in the Spirit's gifts, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life. God of grace. O God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct the leaders of the world, of communities small and nations large, to make decisions grounded in your will for your people, for justice and mercy and care for all people. God of grace. God of all nations, we thank you for raising up servants to bring your word, to bring the name of Jesus in whom there is repentance and forgiveness of sins, life everlasting. We thank you for Jan for calling her into nursing and for calling her further to serve overseas in Pakistan and to share your love through the work of her healing and care and through the scriptures. And as you have called her home to heavenly peace and glory, we pray for her family and her friends who grieve for her passing but glorify you for her living. We also give thanks for sending your servant Bill into seminary to serve the church as a pastor. We thank you for the ways that this congregation raised him up as a young intern in seminary. And as he served your church and your people for his life, we thank you that we were blessed by this as well. We pray for Tony and all of their children and grandchildren at his death unexpected death this last week. We give you thanks for his long life and service, and we pray that you would be close to those who have called him friend. God of grace, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you care for all your children, those who know them to be your children through Jesus, and those who are your beloved children who need the name of Jesus to give them the peace and the mercy and the trust and the love that they so desperately need. Encourage those who are in times of transition, especially this morning we pray for our teenage friend Barry who is on a transition into the Job Corps and we pray your blessing on him as he moves away to learn trades, to uh, step out into a very different world. We pray that he would be well, that he would make good friendships that support his future, and that uh, as he is given an opportunity to come back, uh, we would get to uh, give thanks for this new opportunity in his life. Bless him and all of our young people in the youth group as they navigate the difficult tightrope of being adolescent and young adult and child all kind of at the same time. Lord, give your young people your grace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this church and we pray that we would be a house of mercy welcoming your children home. We pray that in the weeks to come, people would gather at the baptismal font to be adopted as your children and people would gather as members of this place, that people would be welcomed here not only to come home, but to then go out in the gifts and passions you've given them to welcome other people home and to serve you as you've given them to serve. We pray for this Pentecost Sunday to come, that it would be a wonderful occasion to give you all the glory. God of grace, for these and all other concerns of our hearts and minds this day, for our loved ones who are ill, who are under treatment, or who face chronic 
illness or dis, uh, difficulty. For all these dear ones, Lord, we pray, we commend them into your hands, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, that we should at all times and places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. For the glorious resurrection of your, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Passover Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as the ushers come forward and the communion servers come forward, please. For those worshiping from home, welcome in the name of Jesus to his table. This is for you, the body of Christ. And for you, the blood of Christ. Amen. During the receiving of Holy Communion, I want you to be aware that Diane will be available on the pulpit side at the kneeling station for anyone in need of a prayer for healing. Uh, this is an extension of Christ's table here, and so her prayers for you, as the scriptures promise, avail much to anoint a brother or sister with oil, to pray in the name of Christ for their healing. Um, this, is the, this is the church's ministry, and I encourage you, if you are in need of healing today, to come and see Diane before or after you receive communion.
Please stand as you are able. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of abiding hope bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Sing in glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me, Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me, Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me, sing in glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me, when I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Sing in glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. I'm so glad, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me, sing in glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me, sing in glory hallelujah jesus lifted me we're singing glory hallelujah jesus lifted